Try to get started. Okay. Okay, I think we've all seen this before in every scheme report. Uh, it's the general philosophy of scheme. Um, and that's how I was thinking about the general philosophy of uh, this uh, record system. Um, so in scheme, we have, a, we have like uh, different ways of talking about records. We have SERP 9 we have SERP 99 we have R6RS records. Um, this is yet another one. Uh, and the inspiration is uh, Haskell. So, uh, so why did I choose Haskell? Okay, what I like about Haskell's way Haskell organizes data is that it's simple. It has, uh, I think, pretty nice pattern matching, and everything's immutable, which is nice. Um, the couple of things that I wanted to avoid in uh, mine, which is obviously make mutability a little bit harder to, um, you can do mutability, I'll show you later, but um, basically to avoid that. Um, and also, uh, I'm avoiding inheritance. Um, and I'm not going to get, I guess you can ask me later if you want to ask me why I want to avoid inheritance, but my, my philosophy of inheritance is that it should be encapsulated in functions and not in the data, since it's a relationship. And relationships, I think, are best matched with functions. So I consider data just is. It's just a, a group of values put together with a label. Okay, so let's start from the beginning, right? So here's a simple one, right? We got a maybe, uh, just there, nothing, right? So we'll start with the value constructors. Um, okay, so let me talk about data types, how I organize them. So they have four basic parts. The first part is the constructor function, right? So we take a series of values um, we, we organize them with labels and we create some kind of object. Um, uh, and of course we need a predicate to be able to uh, tell us if, um, if those, uh, you know, to be able to type those objects. So that's another uh, function. And then we have a deconstructor function. And what that basically does is given an instance and a series of labels, it'll return back the values that are attached to those labels. And the final thing, which is not so important but is useful, is um, type info. And really what that is, it's, it's, a, um, it's a way of, uh, it, it, it's, it's a way of getting a metadata about a type. So for example, with a type you'd want to know, like for example, what labels, what fields it has. Um, you can have other kinds of information uh, like in Scheme, you can, you know, find out if it was sealed or opaque and things like that. So it allows you to uh, introspect in, into these types. So, um... Now, what does it introspect into? It says given a function. Oh, okay. So the way it works is, uh, the way the type info works is that you, you pass it a function and then it calls that function with this information in the data type. Um, so it's just basically one function that does that. Uh, and usually you can figure out what the other values are by the first value, which would be some kind of like a symbol or whatever. So let's say you had different kinds of records uh, types that the thing might have been constructed from. You can kind of decide that. So the signature of this is that it takes an instance and a function, and it passes the metadata of that instance yeah. into the function. Yeah, well, this, this type info is part of the data type, so it actually just takes one function, and it tells you about the data type. Oh, okay. It tells the function. Okay. Okay, so this is what it looks like as a Surfer 99 data type. Um, so in, in my particular system, uh, I'm building this on top of uh, Surfer 99. And the reason I did that was um, I'm, I, when I implemented this, I implemented this in, in my R6 Gambit. And basically, I kind of unify all the... Um, various ways of defining records into one, uh, basically one API. And the API I decided to, to standardize on was Surfy 99. So this is built on top of, of that. So you can see here, Surfy 99, Surfy 99 is, um, is basically a record system. Um, it's, um, I guess, uh, it's somewhat, has some, a lot of features similar to uh, R6RS records. 
Uh, you can have sealed types, opaque types, generative types. Um, can I, yeah, go ahead. You can speak. Yeah, all right. The, if, uh, the syntax layer is CERT-B9, not R6RS, um, and there is a guarantee that the um, that the, type, the representation of the type is a runtime object, which is not true in CERT-B9. So what you get is, uh, rather than the R6RS situation where there may be uh, both where, where syntactically defined types and semantically defined types don't quite for compile time defined types and runtime defined types have to be meshed, they are in fact the same thing in certain the, uh, the syntax layer is, is truly on top of the runtime layer. I hope that helps. Yeah. Okay. So, um, that th this means that it's a basically it's a, it's a vector, right? It's a vector of lists, right? So uh, this is just basically a label. It just says the type is immutable. So once you set it, then it, um, that's what it is. What? So the hash is just indicating that it's a vector. Um, yeah, exactly. A vector literal. Yeah, it's a vector literal. Hash literal. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's um, the RTD? R R okay, make RTD. Um, yeah, that's basically, it's a, it's a procedure that says make a record data type, type data. Um, I forgot what, type descriptor, record type descriptor. Um, so yeah, this is going to make a descriptor for the data type. So that's kind of like the, the type object. And then from, from in, in Surfing 99, uh, basically you can create other procedures to create constructors and um, predicates from that record type, that description of the type. Uh, okay, so constructing data types. Okay, so basically, so I have a function, make data type, right? Um, because uh, everything's immutable, it's a lot easier to deal with because you basically say what the name of the type is and then uh, a list of uh, fields, right? So in the, ca in, in the case of these values, I'm creating two two value constructors. The first one is just and the second one is nothing. And uh, I have a nice macro that makes it a little bit prettier. Um, okay. So destructuring data types. Okay, so we, create, we created these two value types, right? And so I have a destructor to destruct the data type object, right? And so it's called call with data type. It has two fields, uh, two uh, arguments. The data type that you want to deconstruct in the procedure. And basically what it does is it's going to take this data type and those four elements that we showed before, the, uh, the type information, the constructor, the predicate, and the deconstructor, they are, um, they, they, they are uh, sent to your uh, procedure. And You'll see why I'm doing that in a minute. So here's, here's an example of using that. Um, so uh, new, you know, create a new type. Um, so you can see here, this is the constructor, this is the type information, this is the predicate, and this is the uh, deconstructor. And I use these, um, I use single, um, these simple variables because it's a lot easier to uh, write it out. Uh, so that's kind of like, so we have that, you have instance of, you can see the same type of thing. I'm, I'm, I'm taking that type, I'm deconstructing it, I'm using the predicate and getting the, you know, is, is that object of that type. Um, and you can see here an example of dereferring data, right? So um, we, we have an object, we, we tell it what type it is and uh, the fields. And what it does is it's going to uh, go through those, it's, it's, go, it's, go, it's going to um, deconstruct the type um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to apply the deconstructor to those fields and what it will return is the list of values that are in that object and the list of values in that object we're returning so that's all we're doing here. Um, so uh, one thing too is we're, I'm using a lot call with values, so it returns multiple values. Uh, we there's a similar thing in like uh, common list. Uh, so.
So, yes. Does this in any way relate to the flattening of Monad and Haskell? Um, I don't know. Okay. Actually, I I don't really think of it that way. But uh, so let's think about lambda in a different way, right? So in factor, right? Factor has um, has uh, functions that basically their their main call interfaces they have a stack that they're either popping or and pushing back values, right? Lisp, you can think of is you can think of a, a a lambda as taking one value which is a list, which it deconstructs, and that's where you get your variables from, and then it returns back a series of values. So I took this idea and I, I applied that to types. So I have a type lambda, and what a type lambda basically does is it'll it'll de deconstruct data and return back um, values. So it's a kind of um, function. So taking that, I have a type lambda. So what this does basically, you could think like when you when, when you use lambda, right? It returns that's a value. That's that's a function that takes arguments and you get back values. This is very much the same thing, except that it has a um, pattern matching capability. So the main object you would get would be x and then what it's going to do is it's going to check if the x is a just type right deconstruct it so take take the field a and then return it um, same thing with uh, nothing so in the case of nothing there's nothing there so return nothing or, or you can just say it's not supported right so it's going to go through each clause um, when it finds a matching clause, it's going to deconstruct the value, and then you can call your expressions um, on that uh, value. Okay. Okay. So this is what it expands into. So basically, what it expands into it expands into a lambda, and we're using this call with data type. The just is a is a is a, is a data type, and then what we're doing is we're checking if it's an X. If the x is adjust, then you know uh, do this de deconstruct. Um, otherwise, it, it'll check uh, the next one, and it'll go down. The, it'll go down the list until your else clause, which is not supported. Okay, so uh, these are some features that I have in my type lambda uh, macro. Um, first of all, you can rename fields, so um, which is nice because uh, sometimes you have a variable. Like let's say you had um, you already had a variable called a in your uh, in, in in some code and you didn't want to hide it, um, or uh, some something called y. So you can see here that we're saying um, the 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 field y maps to the variable a, the field x maps to the variable b, and then we're just going to add them together. Um, and you can also use the same system to deconstruct, I guess what I would call primitive types or not data types. But um, I mean, they don't follow the data type library, but I wanted to use the same type lambda for these things. Um, so you can deconstruct hash tables and vectors. Um, it's pretty straightforward on that uh, similar idea. Um, you can destructure a list, which is basically just calling lambda again. So uh, if you have a list, you could say, okay, it has X, Y, Z, and then you can reverse it. And then you can also uh, do Booleans, right? So if the value that you put in the uh, type lambda was true, then it'll check that. Yes? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it would be like a vector ref of the first value, the vector ref of the third value. Um, and then you assign them to a variable and then you can use them. In the hash table, you have to know what the keys are in advance. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you do, you do actually, uh, um, I'm, I'm not sure if I have it where it's, it, 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 it treats that as an expression or not. I don't believe so. I'm not sure, but, uh, 
Yeah. So, uh, but I, I don't think it's uh, necessarily, it might be a limitation of my library, not really a limitation of what you can do um, in this case. So you can add a, a D structure and the D structures and, well, I guess. I mean, basically, the, this, this here could be any kind of an expression, right? Yes. It would evaluate and then we'd go look in the hash table for that. Sure, but you can, for example, deconstruct it into a list of, a list of keys and a list of values. At least not with this. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it sort of like treats a hash table more like a like a record. Yeah. In this case. Now yeah. in the list, that can be nested with the usual semantics? Um actually this is a very simple version. I'd like to make it like something like a destructuring list would be great. I just used I, I mean I, I put this in there, but it's really just uses lambda again, so it's kind of useless. Uh, but it's sort of like a placeholder. Because it would be nice to definitely destructure uh, lists uh, or cons as, you know, in, in a more destructuring list fashion. Vectors, vectors of lists. Yeah, exactly. Vectors um, of and, you know, that's a solved problem. So it's just a matter of, like, kind of integrating that yeah. in there. But I, I, didn't, I didn't do it for my particular library. Insist on a three element list, or would it discard elements beyond the third? Um, Okay, well, what's happening actually with this is, is that it's not, uh, it doesn't change the vector. It merely gets the values from the vector. So if there was no number three, it'll bomb no, out. For the, the next one, the oh, 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 that? Um, the is yeah, it, co it uses lambda, so yes, in that case. Your scheme implementation. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's using lambda and scheme is undefined about what happens to extra arguments. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, so it's sort of like, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, so I, I have it in there just to add it in there as a placeholder. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, so, and one other thing you can do, um, this is sort of like the breakout clause. If you're not really, uh, okay, it didn't format too well, but uh, if you're not, if, if you have a predicate and a destructor, right, then you can um, use my system. And so it'll basically, uh, so in this particular case, the predicate is another type lambda, right? So I'm basically saying for, for the predicate here is I'm just checking uh, for, for a point x, y. If, if x is greater than zero, then y is greater than zero, then it returns true, right? Um, and if, in that case, then run the destructor for that point and then do something. So this is kind of a long-winded way of kind of saying only do points that are on the uh, upper right-hand side if you're looking at a uh, graph as an example. Um, but any kind of predicate or destructor, and I kind of use this for, um, this is the primitive facility that I use for uh, hash tables and vectors and things like that. I define the predicate and the destructor for those. Uh, and so you can also do that for, um, you know, if you have other type systems or other code already. Okay, and this is a question I've gotten from people I've talked about this. Sometimes, yes, I really like your system, but sometimes I really want to break out. I just want to have like one variable in there that is mutable, right? So the way I solve that is using closures. So since our scheme already provides a nice environment, so like in this case, right, I have this mutable point with x and y, and what x and y actually are, they're actually just functions. And uh, so in, in, in this case, x5, I'm actually setting the variable x to 5, and I'm returning y, the value of y. Um, and there are certain actual advantages to doing it this way uh, when you do need to use mutability. Um, first of all, um, you can think of these things as places Right? So you can have different kinds of places. So usually with a mu uh, mutable variable, it's just a set and a get. That's pretty much it. Right? That's your scalar, right? But um, you, with functions, you can do a lot more interesting stuff. You can have vectors. You can have a LIFO variable, FIFO variable, stack variables. Um, and the other important thing, too, is that if you do have a uh, multi-threaded scheme, that you can also, you should, you, it also promotes um, specifying a lock policy for that uh, variable. Um, uh, how, how you uh, mutate it, you know, what, getting locks or whatever. Um, 
Okay, so let me talk a little bit about some types here. Right? So what's a some type? Okay. So we have this maybe, right? It's a predicate. And and uh, basically, so a, the maybe predicate could be a just or a nothing, right? Or else it's nothing else, right? And then uh, we can say, like, in this example, when maybe x, right? We're, okay, I didn't go into type case, but let me explain what type case is. Type case is, a, is sort of kind of like analogous to what lead is to lambda. So in the case of type case, it's going to evaluate this expression and then it's going to call this as a type lambda. Um, but it, it's implemented similarly to a let. So it's just a way of like decomposing a particular object if you don't care about um, having, it as a, uh, having, having, it, having it as a function. Uh, Are there any way of making the font a little bigger? Uh, I'm not sure how to do that. I thought it was big enough. How do you use PDF? What? How do you use PDF, maybe? Uh, let's, see, let's see if I can. I can, I can just uh, see zoom in. <laughs> hey. Zoom in, text only. There we go. Okay. Okay, so I think that's, is that, is that good enough? Can you see it? So, that's your sum type, right? Now, um, of course it would be nice if you had some syntax for that, right? And I already, okay, see, my, my thing got screwed up, but, whoops, okay, wait a second. But basically there is, let me, I have to make this smaller, so I got to unzoom it so you can see that. But, okay. So, so you can have a macro, define type, right? You, have a, you define your type as maybe, just A or nothing. And the way I implemented this particular macro is it's basically like, a, it's a type lambda, right? Except that it only allows certain types of clauses. So in this case, it only allows these two clauses, and this is what it expands into. It creates um, the data types, and then it will create the syntax for you. Um, so that's how I implement the uh, sum type. And recursive types are similar. What is the meaning of the maybe macro then? Uh, what the may maybe macro is, it's sort of like a type lambda macro, except it's constrained, so it only allows certain clauses okay. versus type lambda, which is general. You can put any clauses you want. Okay. Um, so recursive types, very similar, except in scheme, um, we, uh, we use uh, predicates. So in this case, um, you define a predicate uh, and in, in, for the recursive types, I haven't actually figured out how to make a good macro for it yet. But uh, if you wanted to make a recursive type, um, now the thing to keep in mind too in Scheme is that none of the values in a data type, unlike in Haskell, where there are, they are, it's like a type tuple, these are all untyped. So the, basically, um, when you call your tree predicate, it'll, it's going to go through the, it's going to go through the nodes and check that they all match that predicate, just the way, similar to how like a list uh, predicate works in, in Scheme. Um, so in this case, um, it'll create this, uh, you can create this predicate and then you have your recursive type. Um, so you can check if it nodes a tree, then uh, it follows, it, that predicate will return true. Okay, so let me get into uh, type classes. Um, so, the way you can think about type classes is that basically it's a set of functions that can have different implementations depending on the type of data. So let's ex examine a very simple one. Um, so I'm going to use EQ as an example, right? So, okay, so we have our type class, right? So its name is EQ. It has um, one parameter which is type, I just called it that, and then we have one function called equals. Right? So that's the example that we're going to use. 
Okay. So what do we also need to implement type classes? Okay, we need a constructor um, to create instances of the type class, right? And except the, these instances are never actually returned. Uh, rather, we call the constructor for the side effect. So in the background, we record that you've called this constructor and we'll use that later. Um, we also need a different kind of predicate. Um, so we need a predicate where, uh, given an object, it'll return true if, we've constru if we constructed for using that type for that object. So in other words, um, if I created a EQ for, for point, right, and I pass it an actual point instance, it'll check, I, I, it, do I have a construct, did you ever call the constructor for point? Um, and also we need a destructor so we can get that equal function back out of the uh, type class. Okay, so going back to data types, right, you'll notice here, okay, these are all procedures. This is where it starts to make sense. So the way I think about type classes in terms of my data type libraries, it, data, a type class is a kind of data type. And as long as we, base, as long as we implement these, these uh, procedures, we can create our own kinds of data types. Um, so in this case, it's, it's a special one called type, type class where it, does, it, it doesn't use the record system, it actually, we implement these functions ourselves. So I, I know this code's a little bit hairy, it's hard to read here, but uh, I'll explain it. Uh, so this is a, um, is a functional way of making a type class, right? So we have the name, the type parms, and the fields. Uh, and we have this library which we're going to use to store our, our, the results of when people construct things and I made this little simple uh, record type to, to, to uh, which uh, you know basically records the uh, functions that you passed in um, and now and here we're defining the four parts of it so we have the type library right Given a procedure, it's going to call the procedure, it's going to call it a type class, it's going to return everything back, so you can deconstruct this completely. Um, here's the constructor function, uh, which is a very hairy way of just basically uh, separating the, um, uh, the, 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 the type parameter that you pass in and the, uh, the, actu and, and the equals fields, right? Um, and Also, we have uh, a way of checking that these instances are of that type. So I'm using that library. Um, so I have that as associated lists, and uh, I um, uh, basically I, I check if it's uh, if, if someone's called that constructor with those uh, types, and then a deconstructor, which will call it on the action instead of calling it on the object, it's going to call it on the uh, on 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 the uh, type class and give you back those. Okay, so basically my data type library is a simple, extensible, extensible way of handling values. Uh, it allows you um, uh, so the same structure that I have can handle data types as well as type classes. Um, and maybe other types of uh, things. And uh, I use macros to make it a little bit easier to use and, and uh, aesthetically pleasing. And because I'm using lambdas, I'm able to do all this. Um, and so you can find my you can find the slides for this presentation here. And uh, I have my code, which is that library. Um, and the code's in the public domain, so you can kind of do whatever you want. Um, or else it isn't, depending on which lawyer you ask. Yeah. <laughs> I'm claiming it's in the public domain, so I won't sue you for it. I promise I won't sue you. Um, and my, my particular thing uh, is, is dependent on R6 Gambit. In particular, I have a very, um, 
I have a low level de destructor which uh, goes into gambits types and de destructs the uh, value. So in, in, if you wanted to put it, make it purely standards based, you'd have to uh, do that yourself. Uh, okay, that's it. Um, yeah, I, I do have uh, some sample code. Uh, uh, let me see if I can find it. Let's see. Let me escape out of this. Okay. I just got this computer, so I don't have all my stuff here, but let's see if I have something. I think I... Do I use it here? Um, I'd have to find it for you, but I do have some stuff that I've actually used this, because that's why I wrote it, to scratch my own itch. <laughs> But basically it works pretty much like I said. It's basically you have type case and type type lambda depending on whether you want it as a, as a function or you just want to call it directly. Um, one of the, uh, one of, one of the um, limitations to the library is that uh, these only accept one argument. Uh, so uh, I, I didn't generalize the, to do multiple arguments. I was planning on maybe using like uh, a generic function instead. To, to, if you cared about multiple arguments. It's more about uh, figuring out a particular object and saying, okay, when the object is this, then do this. If the object's that, then do that. Um, but I'll, I'll find the code for you after. I, can, I have some. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't really understand the motivation of, um, of type classes in this system. I mean, it has those mm -hmm. category types, so what you're telling me is, I want a little bit of ad hoc polymorphism here. Mm -hmm. but we already have that, you know, all the ad hoc type models that we want. Mm -hmm. words, our tradition is throw the arguments at the function, and if it doesn't like them, it'll, it'll complain. Yeah. So what are the type classes actually doing for you? Okay. Uh, well, uh, I, for, for me, it's more about like um, just guaranteeing that uh, if you have, um, let's say you have a, a few functions and you want to make sure that they're all. They're, they're guaranteed to be implemented because basically the constructor will blow up if you don't make the type class with every single uh, uh, argument. Um, so like if you had if you had something with like, you know multiple uh, functions and you just say want to implement them all together and sort. But the type classes in this case are mostly it's like a it's a very simple kind of uh, um, I think a, gener a generic function would actually be better. Uh, for this type of stuff. It's sort of more like, okay, this is how you would implement a type class in, in using this library. I see. Um, go ahead. You that you wrote it to scratch your own itch. Mm -hmm. Did you elaborate on that? Like, what, what were the problems that you were having? Um, mostly it was about, um, I wanted, really, uh, the motivation was primarily the syntax of the, uh, of, uh, the type lambdas and the type cases because I think one of the problems that I had with the other scheme uh, record types is that they're all, um, you know, they basically, if you want to have, I like to use the uh, functional versions of those and the thing is, is that they, they have separate names for the procedures, I mean for the, for the predicates you have separate names for, right, and for, for the constructors and, and that kind of thing, right, and I felt like it, putting that all together as one, okay, this is the type of it, and putting that as a, as a value um, allows you to basically create this thing so that way you can just do what you normally want to do, which is say, okay, I want to, okay, I got some object here. I want to see what kind of object it is. And depending on the type of object that's passed in to my, to my function, um, okay, I want to do certain things or get certain values out of it. Um, 
So, and so that's kind of why, I, that's, that's my itch, was more of a, uh, my motivation was primarily to kind of simplify that code. Um, and I like the way um, Haskell did it. So I figured, since I haven't seen any library out like that, I made my own. Mm -hmm. This, this system actually doesn't have that. It just, uh, I think you can add it. I mean, basically, it would, you, it would be, um, um, basically, in, 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 in this case, I can show you how you, see if I can, let me just get to it. So, like, in this case, right, since you're implementing these four types, and I'm looking in this library, right, um, and I'm implementing the, uh, all, all, you know, these four things that a data type is. So in this example, if it's not in the library, right, you can, you can make it, you can add and say, okay, we're gonna have an extra field, for example. Exactly. So like in this case, my make type class, I might have an extra parameter called default. Understood. So I, I don't wanna, you know, go as far with this, but I, mm -hmm. I didn't feel, I'm, I'm curious, you know, why you were inspired by, by Haskell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what do they bring to you? Do you okay. I, I, I haven't used, I don't, I don't really use the type classes. I actually kind of wrote, did this just for, to show it here. But yeah, at home, I usually use the type lambda and the type case, which is, for me was the primary thing. Yeah, so um, it's more proof that, yeah. that you can do type classes in the system than actually a practical implementation. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because um, as you said, I mean, the, the, the type class mechanism seems mm -hmm. orthogonal to mm -hmm. what you call the data type mechanism. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I mean, yeah, and one of the things, I mean, w one of the things I wanted to show too was how um, using lambdas it, it, um, gives you this abstraction that you would uh, not only have. So like a data type you could think of is, is itself kind of like a type class, right? Because it has, uh, a type class, is, it says these are the four procedures that you have, right, and you construct it. Say, okay, when, you, when, when I'm calling this, I'm, I'm uh, so, uh, y you know, I, I think part of it is a demonstration, too, of how, I guess, uh, I guess a, st a way of coding. Um, that because I'm using lambdas, I can, I can abstract a little bit, so I'm able to really use the same framework. And because this looks like a data type, you can also use this in the type case. Right, um, but uh, I, I I haven't used used uh, type classes in my own code yet. But I I, I, I I'm I'm exploring it still. Now I'd like to understand a little better how the how these um, types are embedded in the in the record the underlying record system. So there's a there's a there are data type records. Mm -hmm. and those are those are meta from the point of view of your system. But from where you're serving 99 there. Mm -hmm. All right then. Um, now let's say we let's take the, the just and the nothing example. Does that mean that there is that all instances of just X are instances of some particular surfing ninety nine record? Exactly. And likewise with the hopefully solitary instance of nothing, or is it solitary? Um, it's yeah. It, I mean it's it's um, it's not solitary. It actually creates a new nothing every time you construct oh. it. But that's a minor point. Yeah, you can you can you can change you can change that around. You say to yourself, oh, I have no. It's the, it's, it's the empty list here. I, I can make a single pin on done. Yeah. Um, but but in fact, therefore, let's say I know nothing about your system, and you, mm -hmm. I have these objects. I can use the the surfing ninety nine reflection framework. For Ex everything that exactly. Exactly. Without without having to understand your data type objects at all. Yes. That's you can, nice. Yeah, exactly. One of, one of, one of my uh, design goals with this was to interoperate with existing records. So like in, 
in the case of R6 Gambit, we have four different types of, I mean, they all go into one record that Gambit runs, but Gambit has their macros. Yeah. Surfing 9, there's that macro. There's Surfing 99, right? There's R6RS records, which is also, I also implemented. And then this is another one. So the thing is, is that you have the, so I have potentially libraries that are using a lot of different, one library is using one syntax to create records, another one is using another. And so one of my goals was, for example, one of the things that you can do is you can take an RTD and create a data type out of it. Like, they're, like the, I'll show you the way it's implemented. Um, uh, I have a function that turns any record type into a, a data type, which is primarily what the, what the data type thing uses. Um, so this is kind of, you can kind of think of this as more of a surface syntax in this particular implementation. But it's certainly possible to also, if you were writing your own scheme and you didn't want to care about these other records, just to make this a primitive type of thing. You only really need to implement these type four functions, how you implement that, you know, how, how it stores the data is not really that important. You can also just use um, disclosures themselves if you didn't even have records, any kind of records. You can just, using like this kind of methodology, um, st store that. So you, it's possible to do it that way as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem with mm -hmm. procedures. Yeah, ex exactly. I, I, yeah, I haven't actually tried to implement this with uh, with just function, you know, just uh, without without records. Uh, so, uh, this, this is the detail. On this slide. What would library be if it's not an empty list? If it's what? If it's not an empty list. What would library be oh, if it wasn't? Library there. Okay. Well, well, what I'm actually doing is it's it's a, it's a it's a storage point because these are actually clo closing that variable because oh. they're sharing. So the predicate the predicate is going to look at that and is going to look up values. The destructor is going to look up the uh, the you know to get the functions right. For so when passing an object of a certain type, it's going to get the functions for that type and then say that's the equals you need to do in order to for for that particular object. Um, so that's the purpose of it. So when does it blow up if the function is not defined for this instance of the type class? Um, well, basically the constructor, you have to pass in all the values, otherwise it throws an error. And that's built into the uh, underlying record syntax. Uh, so yeah, I have no optional, uh, data types don't have any optional fields. You have to fill every no, single one. Okay. Um, at, we set up the, de the class EQ, which which requires the definition of equals. Mm -hmm. So now it's when you derive, at the time when you derive a, a concrete data type from that class, that's when we look and see whether equals exists. Um, yeah, so what, what the constructor is doing is it actually, yeah. it, I, all it does is it, it actually updates this library yeah. where it's saying, okay, here's, the, for this type, Right. So what, what you, I, I, I should have wrote the code in there. I, I didn't realize I just I didn't put that slide in. But uh, but basically, if you were to call when you call make type class, right? You would pa you would pass in the, a data type that you're interested in for for, the, for that equals method. So like if it's a boolean, right? This is what the equals should be. If it's a character, this is what the equals should be. If it's a vector, this is how you implement equals, okay. right? Or a point, this is how you implement equals. Right? And so what will happen then is that when you call the uh, predicate, it's going to look at the actual instance of a Boolean right? and say, okay, is this Boolean a Boolean? If it is, then I know what, the, what equals to use for it. And that's what I'm giving to you in the destructor. Um, I should have put that slide because I think it would have made that a lot simpler. I didn't realize it until we ran this. But, uh, Okay, well, thank you very much. All right. uh, again, thanks everybody for coming. Um, just you know, after a couple of actually Haskell talks, both of which were.